Right, so to illustrate some concepts around the, uh, the idea of fading, uh, maybe we start off with an existing model. So I believe on the L drive in the CE110 folder, uh, there's something called uh, the Ranch House Fading. So go ahead and look on your L drive and see if you can find that file. Go ahead and open it. Save as a local copy, something like that. Just so you know, this is actually a real example of a ranch house that we worked on a couple of years ago down in San Jose. It looks like a little range out of the San Jose. So, uh, yeah. Some real examples of things that we've had to do for work. Okay, it looks like we're doing pretty good. Good. So, a couple things to notice before we, we dive into the model. Go on the Manage tab. There's a. Under the Manage project, there's an icon that says Phases. If you go ahead and click on that, these are the, these are the default phases uh, that come into a new project in Revit. Uh, existing and renovation. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about how you can change those uh, based on the, the needs of your your project. But these are these are the sort of the faults. So, with that in mind, with these two phases, existing and renovation, go ahead and click on the first floor, uh, first floor floor plan. And if I look in the view view uh, the view tab and the visibility graphics button. Sorry, actually, under the view properties is what we're curious about because if you scroll down on the instance properties of this view, the very last, the very last heading here is for phasing. You can see that there's a phase filter. We'll talk a little bit more about this in a moment, but it says show all, and then the phase is the existing. So what we're looking at in this in this drawing is the house as it exists right now before before uh, work is being done to it. But notice that in the view properties, you do have the ability to change that from existing to renovation or another phase that you have in mind. Maybe this is, you know, maybe on a large campus project, uh, several buildings are built in multiple phases. Um, so you do have flexibility to change that. But for now, cancel out of this. And let's think about in a situation where you had an existing house. And you had a client that was interested in maybe adding a new room or modifying the kitchen or something like that. Um, how do you think about managing your views so that you keep all this information for when you want to draw upon it as an as built document, but then you're also setting up some views that allow you to look at it, uh, the demolition, the things that you might be, like walls you might be taking out or um, you know, cabinetry that goes away, um, things like that. Uh, and then ultimately your sort of proposed uh, final, uh, final design for the, the house renovation. So to get this going, go ahead and right click on this first floor and select duplicate view. And we're going to rename this. Let's get rid of that copy and say floor demolition. And so if you right click on that, on that view that you made, Demolition, and you click Properties, for the phase, select Renovation. And Demo is a little bit tricky um, in that it's not its own phase. Demolition gets attached to what happens in, in, in this case, our renovation phase. 
what are we doing during the scope of work to get rid of things that we don't want and put in new things? And notice that when you change that parameter to look at the, uh, or that setting to look at, look at this building in the, the renovation stage, a lot of things grayed out. Uh, this is basically saying that that, that stuff is from a, uh, an, a previous period uh, in this project. Uh, in this project. We're really, it's going to, the, the graphical settings are set up in a way that uh, what you see in, a, in this view will, will highlight the new construction. So let's, we're in this case the demolition, since we're making this a demolition uh, plan. But just as an example, uh, go ahead and click on, click on a wall and right click and check out the element properties on this wall. And notice that just like our, when we looked at our, visit, uh, at our view properties in the view for the instant properties of this wall, again, the, the lowest heading here is for phasing, and you have, the same, uh, you have the same sort of parameters here. What phase it was created in, in this case, this is an existing wall. It was part of the as-built house. So it was created in the existing phase, and currently there's no plan to demolish it. But again, if you click on that, you, you see that you have some options for for when you choose to demolish it. Now, since we're renovating this building, if I select, if it's demolished during the renovation stage of the building, notice what happens. Graphically, the wall is turned red to note that it is set for demolition. And it's also uh, a dashed line. That's also a convention um, in, uh, in CAD drafting for for uh, things to be demolished, to be in a dashed line. So this is graphically pointing out the fact that not only is this wall uh, being demolished, but the elements that were hosted in these doors, the sliding glass door to the closet and the door into the bedroom, um, are demolished as well. Now, notice also that it's a little tricky for elements hosted in wall. For example, if I, if I right-click on this door, and go to my element properties, and I scroll down to phasing, and I say that that door is demolished, again, during the renovation phase. Notice what happens. The wall disappears. The wall has the same line, uh, line characteristics as the demolished stuff over here. But this wall is filled in. And this wall, notice that it's a dark line to highlight it, and uh, white fill. It's showing that that would be a, a new construction, a fill in that area where you demolish the door. So just be mindful of the sort of uh, graphical uh, ability to communicate your ideas for what goes, what stays, what's new using the phasing filters. Now all that right clicking and element properties and choosing phases can be a little bit uh, a little bit tedious and I just wanted to point out another tool that you have at your disposal if you're going to be say knocking out a lot of things to make room for a, for a piece of your renovation. If you go to the Modify tab, and at the very far right, under the phasing section, there's a there's a hammer called the demolish tool. And notice that now I can just come in and hover over a wall or a bathtub or a toilet or whatever, and get rid of those elements. Everybody with me so far? Any questions? How do you undemolish it? Sure. You know, let's say that I actually did mean to, to get rid of this door uh, to the closets in this bedroom. Um, to undemolish it, it's just as easy as going into the element properties. Again, scrolling down to the phasing heading. And instead of saying that this was demolished during the renovation phase, I want to say that it was not demolished at all. So, really quickly, let's talk a little bit about some of the, the terminology that we're going to use around some of the phasing, the phasing stuff today. Um, again, we talked about the fact that there's two default um, phases that we can look at. In a little while, we'll talk about the ability to uh, sort of collapse these phases if you need to, if you want to do something in 
four phases, but it turns out you can actually get all the work done in the last two. You can take phases three and four and merge them together and have all that work uh, count towards one phase so you didn't have to go and reassign everything. Um, Just to also illustrate this a little bit, let's create a 3D view that would also show the, de the demolition phase, just so you can see that those sort of graphics would carry through to a 3D view as well. So to do that, right-click on your 3D view, again, click Duplicate View, and let's call this 3D Demolition. And rather than demolish our roof along with it, let's just turn it off so that we can see underneath uh, to see the walls and things that we've, that we've shown to be demolished. Uh, but first of all, if you right-click on this view and go to Properties, we need to set up the correct phasing assignment so that we'll, we'll see what we want to see. So instead of the existing phase, let's go to ahead and choose Renovation again. And so if I click on this roof, right click, and choose the hide and view elements, that'll turn off. You know, we can see that these, um, these walls here are shown to be demolished. And I'm not sure why they're not showing up with that red hatch like there are others, but let's see if we can figure out. Go to your manage and go to phases. And the far right tab, the graphic overrides, go ahead and actually, first of all, let's take a look at the, um, the phase filters, the second tab. The shading button? This guy? Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you. So that was my problem. It actually sort of points out an interesting thing. About if, if you're working in hidden line views, okay, where you don't actually see the fill colors, then you may want to, the only thing you can show is how you override the line color to be red, the, the material was set to be red, so that, but that only shows up in shaded views. So if you'd like to also have them uh, show up in the, the hidden line views, then in phase filters, if we change that override so that the line color also overrides to red. Sure. In both views. And let's do that. Let's. Um... Let's go back to our demolition plan, and let's say if we were looking at the, the hidden line view, notice that, that that color goes away, and it maybe doesn't jump out to you as quickly that that's for demolished. Maybe you want to set up some sort of uh, graphical setting so that you could see that uh, the lines that are being, or the, the portions of the building that are being demolished could actually be highlighted as red as well. So if we go to our under manage phases, The graphic overrides here. Well, first of all, first of all, let's let's look at our phase filters. I just want to touch on a couple of things really quick. So these are these are again in a given view. It's uh, a sort of menu of choices of what you ultimately are hoping to show. So if you show like show complete, you're showing the project at the end of all phasing how it exists when everything's finished. And there's a series of parameters that have to show how things show up with a pin view like that. Or if you show new, you're really only showing in a view only the things that are new uh, to that particular phase that you're working in. Or if you're showing previous and new, you're showing the things that used to be there or that were in the existing building as they are, and then you're showing the extra work that was done uh, for the renovation. So these are just a, a series of, of, um, of choices you have for representing what you want to show, how your model progresses through phases, through existing demolition and final proposed design. But if I go over here to graphic overrides, 
Notice that we have choices for how to represent um, lines and cut planes in different phases, existing, new, demolished, temporary. Uh, temporary is kind of an interesting one. This is really talking about things that are that are built during a phase and also demolished during a phase. So if you're working on a construction site and you need to have temporary trailers and things like that set up uh, during the construction process, but they're going to just get rid of them when it's all over. That might be something that falls into that temporary category. Notice for that for the demolished, we've got a couple choices for the for the projection surface. So when you see something um, sort of ahead of you, a projection or a cut plane, if you're cutting through a wall, and in the case of this floor plan, we're cutting through that wall in the floor plan that's, that's turning dashed and turning red. But for the cut lines here, if we choose the pattern. and override that color to say red. Choose a solid fill pattern. Didn't do what I wanted it to do. Let's, let's try that again. So again, under the Manage, Phases, Graphic Overrides, For the, if I choose the lines, for the cut lines, instead of black, let's make that red. If we apply that, it adds that tone to these lines. So that if you were looking at a wireframe without your shading on, you'd still have some sort of visual cue that, that's, uh, that, that those are the elements that you were choosing to, to demolish. Any questions about that before I continue? So are we changing the line or the pattern? So in that case, uh, what I needed to do to show, to give the line color, was change the line in that. So again, one more time, just to be clear, under the phases, graphic overrides, and notice that it even shows up in our, in our little dialog box here. But for the demolished line work, if I change, if I change the color from, from black to red, That's what we get. Yeah, so let's talk about sort of the distinction that you, you're sort of making there. In terms of lines, so the lines are sort of the boundaries of the wall. The pattern would be if it's a hatch pattern to represent, oh, the insulation or the, the color of uh, the dip or something like that. And the other thing to watch out for is the cut lines versus projected lines. And cut lines are ones where you're actually cutting through a surface because you're at four feet high, whereas projected lines are things that are below that four foot cut. Okay, so there's really a lot of different variables in there, and it's not the appearance you want isn't occurring. You got to sort of really think about like what it is you're trying to show and why it might not be or might be outside of the range of what you're trying to show. All right, so let's let's return to our our demo plan. Let's say what we want to do really is we really want to kind of open up this area for a new part of the house and then we're going to think about creating a, a new a new bedroom in this area and let's just walk through some of the steps you take and how we could show uh, the different phasing and the final uh, the final design all together so to get going let's first pull back out our uh, demolish hammer let's get rid of some of the other stuff in here I really just kind of got rid of everything in this little space right here. Now, to see how, how we did, make sure we got everything, let's, let's take this view, the demolition view, and duplicate it. Again, let's rename it. I'm going to call this, 
I call this final. You can call it renovation or proposed design. I'm just going to call it final. And let's change the properties on the view. So that down here in phasing, we want to show the renovation and we want to show it complete when everything's when everything's done. And notice that right now, what that means is that since we haven't added anything on, it's really just taken out those elements that we uh, that we assigned to be demolished. Everybody with me? That all worked out. So let's do this. Now that we're in this sort of Final view. We can just think about this as making this view look like how we want the, the final uh, the final design to be. So no, actually, let's say my design. I really want for a wall to come out through here, but there's a window right here. So what should I do to get rid of that window? I just delete it. Yeah, it's really tempting to kind of be in this you know, mindset like, oh, I don't need this window, so I'll just delete it and make the design the way I want it. But we really need to use the demolish so that we can, we can track that in our design, that, that that's what happens. So let's go back to our demolition plan. Or actually, you know what? You can do it right here in this, in this view. If you choose your modify, demolish, and pick that window, notice that it disappears. And if you look back at your demolition plan, it now it now appears there. So looking at the house as it's designed, it looks like this is a 2x4 stucco wall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Home tab and choose Wall. I'm going to try to match that, that exterior wall so, th so that it's the same. And I'm going to draw a few walls here. Maybe it comes up 12 feet. It looks like I was a little off when I drew this wall to align here. So I'm going to use the Align tool, or AL, on my keyboard. And I first select what I want to align to, this wall, and then the wall that I drew a little off. And that should match those up. And again, I really don't want this, what looks to be like a sliding glass door here. Um, it's gonna actually going to be a different kind of door. Uh, so let's use the Demolish tool again on that. Again, hover over it, select it. Disappears in this view. And again, if you look, check back on your de Demolish plan, it's gone away there too. Hey, John. Yeah. Um, sure. When you demolish the wall, so you're saying since this, so I demolished this wall so the door went with it, but if I went back in and said that this wall in fact was not demolished, that the door indeed does stay that way. You know, um, I'm not sure that there is a way to have them. That's an interesting little hole. It's just not being very smart about it. Because yeah. that secondary demolish, the undo is not complete. But go ahead and just choose the door, and you can change its instance properties. But yeah, that's, that's an interesting little thing. Yeah, good catch. Good catch. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. 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 All right, so let's go back to our design and let's put in some windows. We get a home, use our window tool. Put one there. And there. And I'm going to drop a door in. Let's see what we've got. Um, 
Um, See, I'm going to put in one of these double glass doors here. And I'll put a single door in over here. So again, notice that that these things that I'm creating in this view, in this phase, in the renovation phase, if we check back in our, demo in our demolition plan, they're showing up. So the reason that is because of the face filter that we talked about a minute ago. Remember I showed the, the dialog that had to show new, show complete, show previous and new. It's showing up because somewhere in this view, there's something telling it to not only show what's being demolished, but also show the new. So let's look and see if we can figure out a way that we can have a demolition plan that only really directed a contractor to come in and demolish the things that were in the existing house and didn't have this sort of new area confusing it. He's looking at his plan and wondering, you know, well, how can I demolish something that's not even, it's not even there? If you, if you right click somewhere in this view and click the view properties and scroll down, Notice that the phase filter here says show all. So it's not only showing what's going to be demolished, but it's showing the new, the new elements that we've created. Now, to make that a little bit more clear as a strictly demolition plan, to change that, we need to select one of these, one of these filters. To do that, we want to, see, we want to see what was there previously in the existing phase. So we know that that's going to be one of them. We've got these previous. And then we've got some other... We've got some other choices. And for this for this case, we want to use the show previous plus demo. So again, our our building now is as it existed, and then what's got some line work to denote the things that we want to, to clear out so we can make way for this new addition. So it's really tempting as you're doing some of these designs, to think about sort of stretching things or pulling things. Unfortunately, that gets um, that gets a little little tricky when you're thinking about phases. If you just pull something or drag something or stretch it or shrink it, um, it actually Revit's not going to pick up on the fact that you intend for that to be in a certain phase. It's going to it's going to find out to the model itself. So, you know, for this example, what we've done is if we, we've created these walls and these doors and things, but we haven't created the slab that it's that it's going to be sitting on. You know, and it might be tempting to, you know, find it in this view. And edit the boundary and say, oh well, this we just created this new, uh, this new addition. So if I come in here and you know just update my boundary to reflect this change, we should be good. But if we did that. Again, going back to our demolition plan that shows what was there previously and the things that are going to be uh, blasted out so that we have room for our addition, it's going to show that, that floor as being an existing floor. So to do that, just again, think of it as this is an addition. What we need is a new slab, a new floor, uh, to account for that addition. I'm just going to undo. Going to undo that floor, and in the final model, I would just go and model a new floor. All 
I see that that was actually a different kind of floor from my other one, so I'm going to pick it. And match it to the other floor. Now, something to notice here is, you know, maybe maybe this floor, just for whatever reason, I wanted to you know, the same pattern, the same wood floor, but I wanted it to run in a different in an opposite direction. You know, Revit's actually through um, the pattern assigned to this floor, it's just filling it in based on default settings. But you you can go in and change it, uh, rotate it to whichever degree is most appropriate for your design. And to do that, just click somewhere in where the where the hatch is, pick one of the lines by using tab. And then choose this rotate to do what you need to do. In this case, if I wanted to go 90 degrees in another direction, just type in 90. And there we go. Any questions there? Yeah, sure. I was just, just giving you a sense of how you can, you know, select a floor pattern, but maybe you want that to run in a different direction. So to do that, if you just kind of hover over the pattern, and if you tab over to an individual line within that, and then choose rotate, you can just, you know, maybe it's just 45 degrees for whatever reason. You can just choose to change the direction of that. You know, and finally, one more thing I'll show you before we move on to our next topic is if we go into Manage and look at our phases and look at the project phase that we have, existing renovation, and let's let's do one more and say Insert After Renovation. And let's just call this Future. So this is like when I'm rich, let's see. You know, if I switch this this view property to to um, the future, everything's going to stay the same as it is, but let's say, I'm not going to go through all the demolition stuff, but you know, eventually it would be nice to to have a separate, a separate build building out here for my kids to play in or something like that. And you go through the same steps of creating your new design. But then you know what you realize? You you won a lot of money right before the contractor was coming in to do the work. And you had this in place. And you know, all of a sudden you had the money to do both at once. You didn't have to think about phasing it twice. Uh, just what I want to show you here is that, again, notice that these element properties, for the phase created, they're in the future phase. And what you could do is in this Manage tab, under your phases, And the project phases, this future, if you click on the, the number next to it, it'll highlight the whole thing. And you can say combine with previous, so that again, what you've created in those two things, those two different phases, you can actually merge into one. But what you can't do is separate them out afterwards. So be judicious about how you use that. Make sure that that's what you want to do. Or you go collapsing phases on top of themselves. Because any work that you've made to delineate the difference in when those elements are created by phase, it'll be lost. And you'll be stuck with having to go back and sort of reassign that sort of thing. So just wanted you to be aware of that tool um, capability, but use it wisely. Any questions about that? How to merge the two phases? Sure. So it's under your Manage tab. 
phases. Again, let's say we added, we inserted a new one after renovation called future. You could select that phase and you could combine it with the previous one and it would merge those two together. And just collapse. Collapse the elements in those two phases together. It would all be in one phase. All right, so let's jump out of this ranch house for a little while and let's go ahead and open the, the starting point for your assignment two. And that file should be on the network for you. 